what is electricity? Actually, what is the difference between static electricity and electricity that flows? Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Boscarini. And for our unit on magnetism and electricity, today we're going to understand energy in electric circuits. So, uh, even before we go into to say what is voltage, we're going also to explain what is current and how we measure it. So, today we're going to deal with the two main quantities that we're going to use to describe the behavior of an electric circuit. Now, if you remember our lessons on static electricity, uh, you should remember that in order to charge an object, you need it either to add electrons to it or to strip electrons uh, from it. So if you have an imbalance of electrons, so if you have an excess of electrons, you, you had a negative net charge. If you have a defect of electrons, then you have a positive net charge. Okay, but this is for static electricity. So we're talking about electrons that are, are staying in one place. Now we're dealing with a flow of electrons and a flow of electrons is what we call an electric current. Electric current actually measures the flow of these electrons across a conductor. Uh, like every physical quantity, this has its own unit. The, uh, the unit of measurement of electric current in the international system of units is called the ampere. It takes the name, not surprisingly, from a scientist from the past uh, who was French, hence for the name ampere. In um, English-speaking countries, uh, this unit is usually uh, shorthanded into amps okay and as a real abbreviation it's a big a and this should remind you of what we saw before about the newton the pascal and this will not be the last time we meet a unit that takes the name of a famous scientist of the past what is important is when you write it in full you should you know the first line should be lowercase otherwise it will be the actual name of a scientist you'll be referring to him in this case. But if you just write the abbreviation, then you must use a capital A. We're going to introduce now the tool that we're going to use to measure the flow of electrons in a circuit, the electric current. We're going to call this the ammeter, which, uh, I mean, you can understand it's a contraction of ampere and meter, okay? So just to make it more easy to pronounce was the ammeter. So now we're going to see how we can use an ammeter in a simple electric circuit. So here we are again with equipment to make a simple electric circuit. Again, we have our power unit, which will serve as our battery. I have a light bulb several cables but now i have these two pieces here now uh, this is the base component of a, what we call a digital means the reading will come in the form of numbers on a display a digital multimeter multi means that depending on what i connect here this instrument will be able to register different kind of um uh, measurements in this case, I will add this piece here, and as you can see, it bears a large A. That means ampere, means this is an ammeter. So if I connect this here, you see the display turns on, and not surprisingly, right now, it's measuring zero. So let's start, connect our equipment. Again, I'm using the direct current. And this time, this time, I'm going to connect between the light bulb and the battery, our ammeter. So let's see how this one works. Turn on, okay? And you can see here, uh, probably you can't see it in the video, but the light bulb is already very, very faintly turning on. You might see there is a reading, 
very small reading now uh be warned one ampere of current is quite a strong current um electric circuits normally uh, work with currents of the order of a milliampere okay so we're talking about thousands of ampere this is 0 0.06 amperes which means 60 milliamperes so let's see what happens when i turn up the voltage and you might be able to see that the the current is increasing it's still less than one ampere but has increased to 0.26 now let's increase it more even more even more and all the way to the top okay so this is the maximum uh, energy i can provide to the circuit right now and i have about 0.34 amps and as you can see there's the direct relationship between how strong is the current that is flowing through our circuit and how intense how strong is the light and now we're going to do two more examples of this relationship between intensity of current and behavior of objects which are connected in an electric circuit as you might have noticed i changed things a little bit now instead of a light bulb i have this strange kind of cylinder object this is a motor an electric motor so it's an object that uses electric energy in order to make something spin um I, will, I really encourage you to look in the chart i gave you of the uh circuit symbols and find the symbol for motor but now let's see what happens when i turn on my power unit listen carefully you might hear this this is spinning very very slowly and let's see what happens now when i And this is even more, and you can see it's vibrating. Again, there's a relation between how strong is the current flowing through the circuit, and in this case, how fast this motor is spinning the last object i wanted to show you is this one this is called a buzzer and be warned it's extremely annoying let's see what happens now okay so far nothing you might still might be already hearing that Oh gosh, very, very annoying. Okay, now uh, I didn't show you the reading from the ammeter, but you saw that I was increasing the energy coming from our power unit and the volume of a sound, very annoying sound from the buzzer was also increasing. So you have seen how I place the ammeter in our symbol circuit. Now, this is a representation of a circuit you've seen now. This is another way of representing the battery. This is our light bulb, and this is the ammeter. And as you can see, the symbol for ammeter is very, very simple. It's just a circle with a big A. Now, it's important to understand that there's nothing sacred about the relative order in which you uh, place these objects. Um, for instance, I, I place the ammeter here, but nothing would have changed if I placed the ammeter, for instance, on this side. Now, what is important is that when you build a circuit and you want to know what is the current flowing through a circuit element, you should place your ammeter alongside, so next to it, either before or after, it doesn't really matter okay uh you should not place them across and you might wonder what does this mean um we're going to see now in the case of voltage and the voltmeter what is this setup but this setup 
it's not correct if you want to use an amp meter. So let's talk about the second quantity which is important in order to uh, describe the behavior of a circuit. The second quantity is called potential difference or more easily voltage. And what is it? It is a measurement of the energy that is provided to our circuit. It is the energy that actually moves these electrons through our circuit. Not surprisingly, this energy is normally provided by a circuit element like a battery. Uh, what is the unit of measurement for potential difference? This unit is called volt, and this comes from Italian Alessandro Volta, uh, because he was the inventor of the first battery, so the first uh, uh, object that actually produced electricity. The symbol, again, not surprised, is a big V, uh, and again, not surprisingly, the tool that we can use in order to measure potential difference is called the voltmeter. So, the voltmeter. Here's our setup again. Battery, uh, light bulb, and now you can see I already connected these elements in a closed loop, and now I'm going to do something different. First of all, you might notice that I connected our new component to our digital multimeter. You can see the symbol big V that stands for voltmeter. And now these two cables, I'm not going to place it alongside our battery. I'm going to place it across in what we call a parallel. And we're going to discuss parallel circuits a little bit later. Okay, so I hope you can see this sort of setup. I've added what we say a new branch. Now, let's turn this on. You can see the light bulb is already dimly lit, and you can see our reading. It's about, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, about 2.5. So let's increase our energy. And you, can, you might be able to see that the light bulb is getting stronger, and the reading is also increasing. We are 4.4, 5, more than six and all the way to the top, okay? So again, it seems there's a direct relationship between how much energy I provide to the circuit and how strongly this light bulb lives. So we have now two quantities that are apparently related to each other. In the next lessons, we're going to see what is the relationship between electric current and potential difference? But for today, that's all. Goodbye from Mr. Boscarini.